Good evening. This is Richfield Lutheran Church's video Vespers service for Wednesday, March 16th. I'm Pastor Brian. With me today are Paul on the organ and Mary as our vocalist. We are exploring the psalm from the preceding Sunday and what it has to say with that Sunday's gospel. We gather with the opening litany. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. God be with you and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From of old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright, for your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Our psalm for last Sunday is Psalm 27. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes and my enemies, will stumble and fall. Though an enemy a camp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust shall not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter. Hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Subject me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me, false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, our light and our salvation, grant that your servants who seek your face in times of trouble may see your goodness in the land of the living 
and that we may be set safely on the rock of our faith, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 27 is unsettling. I mean, is it a psalm of trust or is it a psalm of petition? I mean, the psalmist is all over the map or he's out of control. <laughs> and that's precisely the power of the psalms. I mean, they are rarely clean. Like us, the psalmist's mind is bouncing off the walls. First it's, I trust you, God. And then it's, hey, God, where'd you go? And then back again. This is the psalm paired with last Sunday's gospel, where Jesus is standing outside of Jerusalem, where some well-meaning Pharisees are warning Jesus to stay away. Yet Jesus says, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Jesus knows what his mission is, what his passion and crucifixion mean, how Holy Week will play out. He's told his disciples such three times already. On the one hand, he trusts God. And yet, on the other hand, as he will pray on Monday, Thursday, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And then on Good Friday on the cross, he will cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, yeah, Jesus too felt like the psalmist in Psalm 27. I trust you, God, but where are you now when I need you? I suppose that's one reason the psalms are hard to pray, let alone use in church. I mean, not only are they all over the map of human emotions, they're often not clean. Now, unlike most TV shows, you know, where our beloved protagonists encounter some problem, but always by the end of the hour or the half hour of the show, they've happily resolved whatever the troubles were, and now they're joking again. And even if some TV show takes a whole season to solve some big problem, well, at least every episode solves some little aspect of that problem, and we see progress. But life isn't like that, is it? Well, sometimes it is, but often not so. No, we have some giant roadblock on our journey, and we don't have the foggiest notion how to get around it, let alone how long this will take. Or, if even if we can get back on our way, it's the two-year anniversary of the COVID-19 pandemic. When all began, we kept thinking it would be over soon and things would be get back to normal. We kept holding out for, oh, in a week or so. And then it became, oh, surely by Easter. And then, well, definitely by Memorial Day. And then, well, for sure by the 4th of July. And so on. We kept moving the goalposts for two years. When last summer we thought for sure that this is it, huh, then the Delta variant came along and slapped us upside the face. Many of the Psalms were written while the Israelites were in exile. Their homeland has been destroyed and occupied. The people were refugees in other countries. They trusted in God, but where was he now? And how are they gonna get out of this mess? And when? Eventually they are returned, but in the most expected of ways a new country that most certainly wasn't normal anymore. They had to wait 60 some years for this. Most of the original refugees had died by then. It was their grandchildren who got to return. So yeah, God, why'd you take so long this time? Where were you when we needed you? And we trust you, you've been there for us before big time, but please, we need your help now. Well, you can empathize with that, I imagine. We all have desert places in our life. The details vary, but no one gets through unscathed. Can you trust God in this desert place of life, in this darkest valley? When and how will this get resolved? Well, the psalmist doesn't know. Still, he hangs in there with God, trusting and pleading. It's both and. This is an uncomfortable place to be. Yet it's honest. And that is why we need the Psalms. On the third and fourth days of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Psalm 27 was the appointed Psalm in the daily readings. 
How perfect. Yeah, God, we trust you that you will work this out somehow, someday, but we need you to intervene now. There we sit with this open-ended song. How will all this turn out? And when? I don't know. Still, we trust God, and we wonder if he's turned his face from us. In some TV shows, when our heroes cannot resolve the problem in one episode, the episode often abruptly ends with the caption, Stay tuned for next week. <laughs> I think Psalm 27 is like that. I still don't like it that it's not neatly wrapping things up by the end, but I will stay tuned. <laughs> I have no other choice. Where else would I turn? The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Our gospel canticle is, My soul proclaims your greatness. Let us pray. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness in life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May God, Creator, bless you and keep you. May Christ be ever light for your life. May the spirit of love be your guide and path for all of your days. Amen.